when I think about running a hundred miles, what really draws me to it is the simplicity. It's the rawest form of living. I don't talk to people a lot about it. I don't feel like it's something they can comprehend. To say you run a hundred miles, most people don't even run. And running a hundred miles is just one step at a time. It's just training daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, that you condition your body to do that. It becomes something your body's accustomed to. I didn't start out that way. In an ultra, it's all tough. It's tough to climb, it's tough to descend. As the hours click by and the miles click by, you get near the last quarter of the race and it all is work. This will be the longest distance I've ever run. I always say you can't get to a 100 mile race without running. It's a lot of running. The first time I won a 100 mile race, it was very satisfying. The race that I won, I had run the year before and I had run it with a lot of issues. So took the time off and went back the next year and won. And it was an elated feeling because I had corrected what I did wrong. My girlfriend is the one who posed the idea to me. I kept looking for different marathons and different places to go. So she goes, you know, right here in our backyard, we have all of these trails. Why don't you run with me out there? It's where I hike, but we could easily run it. You just keep pushing further and further and pulling up maps and go, oh, you know what? This one goes all the way out to Poway. You're going, oh, I think we can do that. Oh, this one goes through Mira Mesa and I think we can cross over here. We only have to cross over two roads and we're in a whole different trail system. <laughs> so you just keep connecting them and pretty soon you're going, oh, we could do 50, 70 miles out here. When it gets much past 30 though, you really have a desire to go to the mountains. The last three weeks of my training, I ran 104 miles total with three long runs. And then I ran 110 miles total. Again, three long runs. Long runs meaning anywhere from 20 miles to 40 miles. And it's beneficial when you're training to run for 20 to 30 hours. The general population doesn't like to be uncomfortable. And you're looking at a very small sliver of the population that actually craves it. Long, slow distance, LSD, it's addictive. It does something for you. She's invested so much in her success and she takes it very seriously. It's a job. And if you're gonna run 120 miles, you should take it seriously. That's a huge commitment. I think you could do whatever you put your mind and heart into. I've had some luck or good fortune in races as a competitive runner, but I feel like a lot of that has happened because I love running. I never exercised. At all? Nope. When I became pregnant with my first child, we went in to find out the sex of the baby, and that's when he told me she didn't have a pulmonary valve. My husband and I dealt with it very different. He detached, and I couldn't. That was the beginning of the stress, the becoming overwhelmed. And so it took them several months to convince me and talk to a psychiatrist and get me to the point where I would even consider taking medication. My husband at the time just sort of be a spectator. If I asked for help, it was, well, clearly you're crazy. You should do something about that. Just mean-spirited. They discovered that I was depressed and I was getting treated, and then I had to go off the medication when I became pregnant again. So it was really this yo-yo for several years. I didn't go outside. I was everything to my children. I comforted myself with food. It was indulging everything. And because of this medication, I couldn't tell if I was hungry. I couldn't tell if I was full. I couldn't tell if I was happy or sad. I also started to develop high blood pressure and then borderline diabetes along with this anxiety and depression. Every year I would need the medications increased. So I went back to the doctor and that was when I found out I weighed 200 pounds. I was sitting in her office thinking to myself, what happened? What happened to me? Who am I? And I just really meekly said, is there another way? She told me that if I lost weight, it would probably correct itself. She goes, picture a number in your head of how much you want to weigh and add a zero. That is the amount of calories you could eat per day to be the weight 
that you've decided. So I picked a magic number, 130, decided I get 1,300 calories. So I got myself a gym membership. I signed up for three times a week because I told myself any more than that and I'm asking for failure. It took about two weeks before I caved miserably. <laughs> Turns out I was probably eating 4,000 calories a day easily. Being the food addict that I was, wanting to eat all day, all the time, naturally that led to a ton of fruits and vegetables. I think it was the first three months, I dropped 30 pounds. I started to feel like you can make a difference. You can choose a difference. I started doing the elliptical machine and the treadmill machine, started to see those times of exercise as just this escape. I was still married, it was still horrible. It was a, a time for me, a coveted time that nobody could taint. But at the end of the year, when I stepped on the scale, I had only lost 65 pounds. And all I could think of in my mind was, this is a five pound failure. Everything else in my life started coming into play. This abusive relationship, this inability to speak up for myself. And it was then that I decided, I don't necessarily wanna be skinny, I wanna be strong. Running entered the picture with the five pound failure. One friend in particular said, I'm doing this 21 mile walk jog. You should sign up. So I go out to the little neighborhood trail and I just <laughs> suck wind. <laughs> a couple weeks before the event, I discovered that a marathon was only five miles longer than I had signed up for. So I took a leap of faith and I upgraded to the marathon. You know, a 50K, it's only 31 miles. That's only five miles past the marathon. So signed up for a 50K. What made me push forward to the 50 miler, all of a sudden I was surrounded by this warm hearted community who just wanted to help you, encourage you. Up until that point in my life, I didn't know people like that existed. My first 50K was also when I left my husband. After I had gotten off of all these medications, you do start feeling. And I felt anger and I felt hurt. Maybe it's not the best thing. It's extreme, definitely. But it's dangerous to overeat. Running is not everything to me. It's not who I am completely, it's what I do. It pushes me, it rewards me. It makes me better. I do feel like my best self when I'm running. When she's racing, she's intense. It's a whole different person. 100 miles I always thought was crazy, and, and now that I'm not running them as much as I used to, I, I have nothing but respect for somebody that could get through 100 miles. So when she jumps to 120, I'm just like, wow, Angela, that's, that's nuts, man. I think it works to her advantage because of how tough she is. Throw on a few more miles, fine. Throw on another 50 miles, she's going to be just that much stronger. It's definitely not another race, so it'll definitely be the farthest she's ever ran. I've seen her do it so many times, I know, okay, she's in some pain, but it's something that she enjoys and is embracing and really, you know, what she loves to do. The race has everything that I love with the mountain trails, the point-to-point -point course. Well, two of the people on the team have paced me before. I feel confident and comfortable with them. There's a lot of reasons why you want to pace her. Some people have a goal time like Angela, and so what they want someone who's going to make sure that they don't slack off too much. In my mind, if she finishes, it's a success. In her mind, I think she'd prefer to win. I think the drive, more than anything, is what carries her through these ultra marathons. Certainly tenacious and, uh, and, and just able to dig deeper in anything that she does. I think it's her ability to suffer. And it's that ability to say, you know what, I'm just going to tell my body to keep doing this until we're done. I think that Ange is calm at the start because of experience. The experienced runner knows it's too long of a race to be excitable at the start.
the beginning of the race, her experience level was apparent. She came in right on the split that she wanted. She still felt pretty good. Her mindset was, the girls ahead of me are still running too fast. So here's the old sage out there, like, they can go ahead. They're running from me. She's listening to her body, and that's the mark of a good athlete. It's definitely open. You talk more openly. Uh, how many minutes have I been here? If you talk to her outside, she's more confident. But during the rough time, you see how vulnerable she could be. And she starts apologizing more when she has those weaker moments. She kind of goes all Debbie Downer on herself, and then you have to kind of try and pull her out of that. A lot of people don't quite understand the mentality that it takes to win these races. You have to realize that it can be therapeutic, but it can also be your demise. You can run yourself into the ground. She started running because she was in a bad place, and running got her out of there. A couple weeks before a race shows up with that taper and that extra energy comes that non-stop thinking. She's almost collecting excuses to, to not be happy. It's like she has to find the pain that she can then channel into her race. She started off pretty strong. We were hiking really good. Was it probably around mile 60 is when it really started getting to her? That's when Angela really started having a tough time. You try to run as long as you can without turning on the light. There is sort of a mental shift that goes, okay, now we've been doing this for a long time. Once your nutrition starts plummeting, at least for me, it directly affects my mood. And then I start beating myself up and then I start going to a really dark place. It was a struggle, no doubt. It was the first time in the race approaching the mile 68 station that I did have the thought how I'm not even halfway at a time in most races when I should almost be crossing the finish line. Very self-destructive. I remember telling David, I am a whiny baby. I can't do it. I, I don't know what what is going to happen. I don't know that I ever thought I wouldn't finish, but I did start thinking it was going to be an ugly finish. I was thinking at that point about whether or not I was okay being second. She was coming out of a low spot through the night. She had had a difficult time getting you know calories and hydration and so my job at that point in the race knowing that there's a whole lot of race ahead of her still is really just to try and get her back together and and just get a good foundation for the next pacer to carry forward with between 90 and 99 the sole job of the pacer for nine miles was to get food in her before this big climb up to the finish and man the pacer did her job Jenny did her job she came in, she chugged a Coke, shoved some food in her mouth, let out a huge burp, set on back, and took off. That's the Ange we know. That's the wolf that's ready for the hunt. You could have some ups and downs. You can find yourself on a peak and go, wow, and take that in. Sometimes I've run a race where it's just mud from the beginning to the end. Mile 70 to 100, it's tough, mentally and physically. When I get to the last marathon, then I start counting down. Then it becomes, hey, you only got a marathon left. You run a marathon three times a week. You can do a marathon. You're down to a 10K. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't even lace up for a 10K. You don't even do 10Ks. For me, I click them off. I click down. She's a closer too. So she likes the end. Her specialty is hill climbs. She can really get up a hill. She's like a mountain goat. If anybody can run, out of a bad spot, it's Ange. It was probably three or four switchbacks from the top of that climb, Jenny caught a visibility. And so then it was okay, and it's on. And I knew once Jenny saw them, I would catch her. 
I just knew it. I mean, I know the drive, I know how I felt. We hit a, a straightaway and I saw her about 100 feet ahead of me and everything just went silent. Probably about 10 feet ahead of us, she stopped and she gave trail. She goes, go ahead and pass. And I said, good job and passed. I just heard these crazy loud screams. The intensity of the screams let me know that they didn't know who was gonna be first. There's just nothing quite like crossing the finish line and I think the first thought on my mind is whew, you did it you made it to the finish because it's just it's never guaranteed This race really showed me that I think I'm ready to trust more, to open myself up more, to being vulnerable toward people that maybe I don't have as close of a relationship with or as long of a relationship with. And I think that was a really valuable lesson. Ultra running has introduced me to the kindest and most compassionate group of people that I never knew. A handful of those I'm very grateful to call my friends. They've become part of my family, and my family no longer consists of dysfunction and abuse, but rather it's full with a compassionate man who loves me unconditionally, and his support is unwavering. And it's not just for me, it's for my three children also. We need to take care of ourselves and we need to remind ourselves that we do have value, that we can make change. We can change our circumstances and we can change ourselves.